<clears throat> well, hello there. Welcome to our painting night live. We're going to be taking a look at the frontal pour again. And uh, in our membership, the pouring studio, uh, every second week after we've done a technique walkthrough, uh, we do a, pour, a painting night live or pouring night live, I guess works too. But I'll show you some other ways of using the technique, uh, some variations you can uh, try the technique in. So just some different ways of looking at it, different ways of doing it, sometimes more advanced ways, um, uh, sometimes just more complex color schemes, all kinds of different ways. But that's what we're going to be doing today. And I just want to say welcome and thank you so much for joining me. We've got a packed house already. That's pretty awesome and exciting. So we've got Donna is here. Hey, Donna and Sharon. And uh, Linda is here. Um, who else is here? Uh, Elizabeth is here. Hello. Welcome. And uh, Carla is here. Susan is here. So we've got all kinds of people in the house. Hey, um, Pat is here. Fantastic. So Donna is here. Awesome. So we've got all kinds of people here. A lot of our members. JC just showed up. The party can get started now. Um, Robin is here. So I'm sure more people will be uh, trickling in as we get going. Um, but I'm excited you could uh, all join me today. It's going to be a fun, it's going to be a fun uh, painting night, I think. I'm going to do two different paintings for you. Uh, they're both going to be on uh, six or 12 by 16 canvases. One, I have colors mixed with my glue mixing uh, pouring medium. And I'm going to be adding some dimethicone or the coconut hair serum to those colors. Uh, so we're going to get a lot of cells. I'll be doing a little torching. Excited to see what that what that one turns out like. And then I've got another one that we'll do with the Floetrol based recipe, similar to what we did yesterday, which is right over here. That is the uh, simple funnel pour we did yesterday that is dry already because it is hot over here. It's in the upper 80s in San Diego. So that dried really quick. So I was able to hang it up for you. So that is uh, uh, what we're going to be doing, something similar to that, only a little bit more complex. The one right behind me is also a funnel pour. Uh, so we're doing uh, this very fun uh, funnel pour technique. So um, let's see here. Just checking. And if you have any questions as we're going along, feel free to throw it, uh, put them in the comments. I'll uh, try to answer them as quick as I can. Um, but I'll walk you through the colors we're going to be using. Uh, I'm, stick, I'm sticking to that analogous color scheme. Uh, so uh, colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. So I'm keeping it fairly simple color wise. Um, and that's a safe way to go. Um, we're not going to get a lot of muddy blended blending colors. So um, uh, when you use a, an analogous color scheme, you're in pretty safe territory. So and there's a lot of uh, uh, blending and mixing uh, with the funnel pour in general. So uh, I'll get into that in a second. But uh, I just want to, um, uh, and then uh, uh, Desiree already has a question. Uh, how thick is the consistency for a funnel pour? And uh, it's, I'll show you the consistency. It's a small mound or a slight mound. Um, so it's not too thin. You want it to have a little bit of body. Um, and uh, I'll show you the consistency. I showed the consistency yesterday. So if you want to check out that video, I kind of went into a little more detail on it. I'll show you again today, though. Uh, very slight mound. And I'll talk about the mixing recipes and uh, what's in there and everything like that. So um, all right. So we've got LC has come. Hello, LC. And Lorna is here. Hello, Anne is here. Welcome, Anne. Um, glad to see you. So I just wanted to um, say something a little bit before we get going. As you probably know, or maybe you don't know, uh, my pouring studio membership, it's an acrylic paint pouring membership, is open right now. It's open to new members to join. I've got um, quite a few of our new members right here, which is fantastic. But uh, all week long, I'm doing these videos uh, to show you what goes on inside the pouring studio. So this is a, a really um, compacted view of what we do all month long inside our membership. Um, yesterday we had a technique walkthrough. We uh, do one technique every month and work on 
just one technique, kind of focus on that one. And then today I'm showing you some variations of that technique. So there's plenty of variety. You can approach all these different techniques in a multi multiple, um, multitude of ways, multiple of ways. Um, so there's not just one, you know, you're stuck with it, doing it just one way. There's many, many ways. Uh, and then tomorrow we're going to be doing a studio chat. And uh, normally in the studio chat, I, I share lots of different topics. They could cover things like composition, uh, varnishing your paintings, um, more advanced color theory things. Uh, what else have we discussed? Um, you know, finishing like the back of your paintings, like what's in, involved in framing and uh, hanging your paintings. Uh, we cover all kinds of different topics in there. Um, and so I'll have a topic tomorrow that uh, might be interesting to you. I'm not going to spoil it. I want you to be surprised. Um, but you'll be able to kind of use that, whatever we talk about, and uh, uh, kind of use that for most of your acrylic pouring, not just sp specific to the funnel pour. Um, so that is going to be tomorrow. Thursday, we're going to have a Q&A. So if you have any questions about the funnel pour or other acrylic pouring uh, topics, feel free to ask those. Um, you could also, if you want to, send emails into me. If you've got a burning question that you really want answered, um, I'm going to show you where you could uh, email me and submit a question for Thursday's uh, Q&A. And this is normally our members Q&A. So only members are able to uh, join our live streams and ask questions. But in this um, kind of whirlwind uh, membership experience, you know, feel free to submit any questions. I'll be happy to answer them. Um, so I'm going to just, where is that here? Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to email me at brad at pouringstudio.com for our Thursday Q&A. And then Friday, we're going to have some more demos. And uh, it's going to be a, like a double header demo Friday. We're going to meet at 3 o'clock. Uh, and then normally, every Friday, uh, I have a demo at 4 o'clock. And before, that, that was always open to the public. Everyone could come and watch my Friday demo. But after the membership closes on Saturday, uh, those Friday demos are going to be only for members. So it'll be a members only demo. And that can share a little more detailed uh, information with all my members. Uh, so that's going to be another feature of the membership is the Friday demo will be um, another uh, members only uh, uh, event. So it's pretty cool. So I'm going to take the uh, email off for the moment and I'll flip, uh, flip back here to see if there are any questions. But um, let's see here. I need to grab a, a sip of water. It's so dry. My throat is <laughs> really dry today. Plus, I've been talking for like two weeks, which is unusual. I normally don't talk all that much. That might be hard to believe, right? Um, but uh, so uh, let's see here. Um, I was just checking quick for any comments or uh, questions. But I wanted to talk a little bit about my members because no member is complete without its members. And uh, our membership is complete without its awesome members. And I have got a lot of fantastic members in the pouring studio. Um, many of them are right here live with us. And uh, I just want to let everyone know that um, along with the Pouring Studio content and all of the bonuses, like the courses that are included, uh, you have access to our incredible membership, which is really amazing. Uh, we have a private uh, members-only Facebook group. And um, most of the members, well, not most of them, many of them, I'll say, are part of that Facebook group. Uh, it's not required. You don't have to join that Facebook group. I know a lot of people don't like Facebook, um, which is totally fine. You don't have to be part of that group, but it's there for you if you want to. But we have a lot of members in there, and we're always uh, sharing our paintings, um, getting feedback, sharing tips, um, asking questions. Uh, so it's a really fun, uh, supportive, safe atmosphere. Um, I love it, and I love what our members have created out of it because it's really all them. Um, that have created that awesome uh, Facebook group. So that is available to you uh, if you become a member of the Pouring Studio. And um, we also have a, a little community 
inside the membership is a small community. So you could share your, your paintings in there. Uh, and I know um, a few members share their paintings exclusively in our, inside our small um, or inside our membership community, which is really, really awesome. And the other great thing about our uh, membership is every month we have an art show. And so you could submit your paintings um, during the month and you could be following the technique or submit paintings you did uh, using the technique of the month, but you don't have to. I'm, it's very lenient. Um, so you could just submit any poor painting you want to and you, you put a hashtag on it. So every month I have a hashtag. Uh, April Art Show is coming up next or, Mar or May Art Show or June Art Show. Hashtag um, June Art Show. Uh, I don't know why I talked about June. But anyway, uh, so we get together once a month, uh, take a look at all the paintings that were submitted. Um, and it's a really, really fun uh, time to kind of look at every, what everyone has been doing, um, uh, all the progress that have been has been made. Our members have been getting incredibly great results. Uh, when a lot of our members started, um, they had just really begun doing paint pouring, and now they're creating some really amazing paintings. And it's really fun and remarkable to see. It's very encouraging. Um, and uh, I love to see the progress. So we all get together. It's kind of like a little just fun event. And I give away some prizes as like a little added bonus, uh, just kind of randomly. I have a wheel that I spin and uh, you could win some really cool paint pouring prizes. So that is a really fun event that we do every single month. Uh, it's just a cool little uh, community thing that we do inside our membership. And, uh, but I just wanted to say that the members are really what makes this mem this uh, pouring studio membership amazing and, and really work. And without them, without my founding members and members that have joined later, I wouldn't be here right now talking to you uh, about funnel pours. So I just want to say a big thank you to all of my members, past and uh, the new members that have just joined me, because um, they're all incredibly supportive. They're very um, um, uh, encouraging and they're very positive. And I just love the energy that we have inside our uh, Pouring Studio membership. So thank you so much, all of my awesome members. And uh, um, so if you would like to be a part of that, um, I'm gonna just throw a link in the chat right now. You could go check out the Pouring Studio membership and everything that's included, uh, maybe after our demo here today. Uh, so I'm gonna just put that in the chat and uh, feel free to join me. And if you have any questions, you can go ahead and um, email me about that as well. I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. I'll throw my uh, email in the chat as well at the end of our um, demo session. So, all right. So anyway, let's, um, I'm just gonna check and see if there are any uh, questions, urgent questions. And, uh, and I'm not seeing anything right now, but, um, Oh, Nancy is saying she tried to, Nancy tried to post the other day and couldn't get in. Um, I'm not quite sure why, Nancy, but uh, send me an email or a message me on um, the website and I'll try to figure it out. So, all right. So let's see here. Um, and thanks, Donna. <laughs> Donna, um, I think missed our yesterday's live, but uh, yeah, that's the painting we did yesterday. Thank you very much, Donna. I appreciate that. It's a fun, it's a fun little painting. So, all right. So anyway, let's get into uh, doing some funnel pours and um, I'll show you some various ways of approaching them. So I'm going to flip over here to uh, my top view camera and uh, we'll take a look at the first, our first demo. So here is my 12 by 16 canvas. It's all prepped and ready to go. Um, I'm going to just scooch this over here and show you the colors. Um, and this is going to be a blue, violet, and red violet analogous color scheme. So I have got a really beautiful uh, amethyst color right here. I'm using just all the regular old craft paints for this first demo. So this is just craft paints and my school glue uh, mixture, one part glue, one part a craft paint, a little bit of water to get the proper consistency. And uh, 
So we've got our little amethyst color. We've got a really dark blue right here. This is like a navy blue. Um, so we've got a really dark color. I've got a really light blue right here, um, which is a fun, really bright blue from Blue Cotton from Apple Barrel. Um, a pretty color. And then I've got a, I'm kind of cheating a little bit here. This is like a coppery color. It's called Royal Ruby from a Deco Art Dazzling Metallics. And it's not exactly a red violet. It's more of a coppery um, reddish color, but it's close enough. I'm gonna squeak it in there. So in, into our uh, analogous color scheme. And this one right here is a really dark, uh, almost black, but it. I mixed this custom. This is a, again, just craft paint and our glue. It is a berry color, a de another Deco Arts Dazzling Metallics and a black um, from Deco Art uh, Americana brand. So it's just a really, really dark, uh, like crimsony red color. Uh, and this is kind of, this is uh, this right on the edge of a red violet. This is very a little more on the red side than the violet side, but it still falls in that red violet category. So this is gonna be our base coat today, this dark uh, reddish violet color. And then we've got these other colors. So we've got a, a light one and a dark one, and then a couple kind of in the middle, a mid value range colors. And what I'm gonna put in here, I'm gonna put some dimethicone in here. And uh, what that is, it's very similar to silicone. Um, it's a, kind of a variation of silicone, but it comes in this uh, coconut milk hair serum. You might've seen this before. I'm sh I've used it many, many times. I prefer this actually uh, over the silicone stuff, the treadmill belt stuff. Um, this works better for me, I think. Um, and it's not so greasy when it's dry, when the paint is dry. You don't see these big old greasy puddles of silicone. Um, so it's a little easier to work with. So this is by OGX. Uh, coconut milk hair anti-breakage serum. And you can find this on my Amazon page if you're interested in it, along with the other silicone that I use. Um, and then I like to transfer it into these little tiny bottles with the needle tip. Uh, it's just a whole lot easier to control um, coming out of these little tiny bottles. And uh, the active ingredient in this stuff is called dimethicone, which is a version of silicone. Um, and uh, it's uh, again, it's a little easier to kind of clean off your paintings, a little easier to work with, but you still get these beautiful uh, cells. So I love using the coconut milk anti-breakage serum. And uh, so I'm gonna put that aside. I'm gonna put silicone in all four of these paints. I'm not gonna put any in our base coat. You never wanna put uh, any kind of oil in your base coat color, but I'm gonna put some in all of these colors. So I'm gonna do that right now and then mix them up and get them ready to go. So here we go. I'm just going to put in maybe four drops in each color. And these are pretty tiny drops. So that's good. So about four drops. And you don't have to be super um, accurate with that. I'm going to grab a tissue for wiping my stick. And I'm just going to mix this in. And I'll show you kind of how much I mix it in. I give it a, a fairly decent stir. That's pretty good. Something like that. Um, you definitely want to stir it. You don't want to just leave those big drops unstirred because you'll get these big giant uh, silicone cells. So I definitely want to kind of break those up in so we have smaller cells. There we go. Two down. And I'll go to the uh, third one here. Here's the kind of coppery color. And I wanted to use the coppery color just because I wanted some interesting multicolored cells. Um, and this is a really pretty color. So there we go. That's pretty good. And then I'll just wipe one more time. And let's do our uh, amethyst. I love this color. Give that a nice stir up. And there we go. That's it. So we're 
we've added some uh, silicone, we've stirred it all up, and we're ready to uh, put our base coat on. So I'm going to just move these aside and scooch these over here. And then get my canvas back. And uh, and Sharon is just Sharon just said uh, she's not a fan of cells. You're not going to like this painting, Sharon. <laughs> but you could do this without adding the silicone or the dimethicone. Uh, and actually, using the glue formula, uh, you don't get very many cells. You get far fewer cells with the glue than you would with uh, the Floetrol. So you actually might like that quite a bit, uh, using this as a funnel pour. So I'm going to uh, just pour on my uh, base coat here. And I think I'm just going to spread it around. I'll show you how to do this. Yesterday, I kind of did the flood coat, and I uh, tilted it all around. This one, I'm going to just kind of spread it out. And I might tilt off a couple corners first. But so I'm going to just kind of move it around. It's a little easier to kind of move the glue medium with a spatula or palette knife or any kind of tool than tilting it all around. And here we go. So I just want to cover the canvas and then I'm going to tilt, I think over a couple corners, maybe not all of them though. And I'll show you how that kind of uh, technique works. So I'm going to stop right there and I'm, I'm just going to lift up my canvas and I'll tilt over this corner. And kind of use my fingers to kind of move the, the paint around. So again, I want kind of an even uh, coating of, of paint on the uh, canvas. And maybe I'll tilt over, I'll turn it and tilt over this corner as well. And then two of them I'll, I'll tilt off after we've done our funnel. So, and that is a little... Um, it's a little bit trickier, and you don't have to absolutely, you know, absolutely tilt off. I'll show you a way of um, covering the edges without tilting, if you have something that you really love and don't want to tilt. But uh, there we go. So we've got kind of this side covered. We've got two corners covered. Whoa, S slippery. And uh, I think I'll leave the rest. Um, I'll leave the rest uncovered, and maybe we'll tilt a little bit more after we do our funnel drag. So I'm just going to kind of wipe my fingers quick here. Um, you don't want you don't want uh, wet fingers when you're holding your funnel. It's going to be difficult to. Um, it can be very slippery. You want a slippery funnel, so. Um, and uh, I see a question from Chris. I'm going to answer this. Um, and Chris is asking, uh, Brad, can you use any coconut oil or argon oil? I don't think you can, Chris. Um, what you want to look for is whatever you, oil you get, uh, go and look at the ingredients on the back. And the first ingredient, or one, the first or second ingredient, should be dimethicone. Um, because that is the active ingredient. So take a look at the back of the bottle. And with this one, ingredients, the first ingredient is dimethicone. So this is going to work really well. That means there's a lot of dimethicone in this uh, product. So take a look at that. If it doesn't say dimethicone in there, um, I probably wouldn't buy it or use it. Um, so that is what you're looking for, is dimethicone as ingredient number one or two, really. So. Um, but that's a great question. All right, so let me um, move that. 
And uh, Desiree is asking, are there different base coat consistencies for different pores? Yes, there are. Um, these paints are all mixed the same. So it's the same consistency for everything. And this recipe is one part glue, one part paint, uh, a little bit of water, but they're all the same consistency, that slight mount. So I hope that helps. That's a good question. And let's see here. All right, so let's go ahead and grab our funnel and uh, and I'm going to use the, our white funnel that we used yesterday. It's kind of got this medium size hole in it. And uh, one thing to, to be aware of, if you're using paints that have silicone in them, uh, you want to go and not throw this in your bucket of water because that'll spread that silicone over all your tools. So keep this separate and maybe wipe it out uh, with some paper towels or something and then wipe it out with um, rubbing alcohol uh, to get all that silicone off of your funnel so you clean it all off. Um, otherwise, you might get a uh, unpleasant surprise the next time you use your funnel and you get these crazy looking cells or something. So with this one, uh, I'm going to just start in the middle, I think. And I'm going to kind of work around in an interesting um, in an interesting pattern. I might do two funnel drags, perhaps. I'm going to not start right in the center, but maybe off center a little bit. So I'm going to just gently hold this down. And let's see. Oh, before I do this, let me flip the camera so you can see what happens first. I, so I don't kind of mess it up like I did yesterday. OK. So let's see what that looks like. Um, I think this looks maybe a little. OK, here we go. I'm going to flip the, let's see, will you be able to see this? No, I'm going to wait until I fill the funnel. Then I'll flip the camera. Oh my gosh, three cameras. It's hard. Um, so here we go. Let's add some colors. I think I'm going to start with our light color first. And I'll just put a little bit of that in there. And I'm just going to be eyeballing how much paint to use. Um, I don't think I'm going to fill this funnel up all the way to the top. Maybe a little bit, um, maybe about halfway, and then I'll drag it around. And then I might add another one, another funnel pour on top of that one. We'll see how it goes. So adding the paints, I'm just kind of going by feel here. And maybe one more of our blue. So this is probably, oh, I'm guessing two ounces, two and a half ounces in the funnel. And uh, I just did floating layers, so they're all kind of floating on each other. Let's go over to the next, the side camera. So let's move our funnel around. So I'm going to just slowly lift the funnel up and start moving it. And you'll see the paint starting to come out. And you can control the, the speed at which the paint comes out of the funnel by uh, lifting or lifting up higher or pushing down and letting just a small amount out. So I'm just kind of wandering it around. And let's see here. I'm going to kind of go backwards on top of itself. And there we go. So we've, that's one funnel. We've got uh, one funnel out of there. I'm going to just pull this away. And that's cool. It's kind of an interesting uh, shape we've made. Let's do one more. And I'm going to change the order of the paints. And I guess I'll start right here since I got a big old <laughs> drop. So I'm going to start with the copper, I think. And maybe use less of the light blue. We got a lot of light blue. I'll use a little less of that. Maybe a little of our dark. 
whoops, little drip. Just a tiny bit of the little, the light blue. Sorry, I'm totally blocking the funnel shoot. So there's a little bit of the light blue. I'm gonna go back to the copper. And a little bit more of our uh, amethyst and that's, that might be it. So, or maybe just a, a touch more of our dark. I want a little bit more dark in there. All right. Okay, so here we go. We've got a second funnel. Let's move this around. I'll kind of move it inside here. And maybe I'll just go right over the top of our previous one. And I'm letting a little bit more out now. And you can kind of go back over where you have just been. I'll move a little bit down here. And there we go. I'll call that uh, good. So we have put two funnels full of paint on our canvas. It doesn't look that great right now, but don't worry. I'm excited to see what will happen. I'm gonna take you and show you the top view again. So here we go. So we've got a bunch of colors, um, kind of big blobs. It's not that great. Uh, I'm going to do a little tilting. I might tilt over this corner, this edge and this corner, and then we might, um, we'll do some torching perhaps. I'm sure we'll do some torching, but I'm just gonna do a little tilting first. And I just wanna cover these corners and I mentioned this yesterday, but when I do the funnel pour tilting, I am a little more aggressive than normal, my, my standard uh, three phase uh, tilting technique. This one I go a little more aggressive because I want that paint to make interesting shapes. So I want to cover this. So normally I don't tilt this fast with regular types of pours. And then I'm gonna cover this corner down here and kind of move the paint down there quick. And then kind of back. So this, this aggressive quick tilting just allows the paint to move in interesting directions and you get some very cool, interesting shapes. So let's see here. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm liking what it's happening now um, I'm going to flip this around. So that looks pretty interesting. And let's see, anything else I want to do to this? I'm just going to wipe my fingers. And, uh, Linda is asking a question. Oh. Um, Linda is asking, uh, what is the best contrast color to use with analogous colors in your opinion? Um, well, there's many different colors you could use. It, it really depends on the analogous color scheme you're going for. Um, I'd say if you're going for um, if you want it, you know, it really depends, I guess. Um, if you're using a lot of light colors in your analogous color scheme, the best contrast color would be a really dark color. So something like black, um, or a really dark brown or really dark blue, something like that. If you're using a lot of darker colors, the best contrast color would be a, a very light color, like white or just slightly off white. So it really depends on the color, the other colors you're using. Uh, they're all they're all relative. So everything kind of depends on um, the other colors in your uh, color palette. But um, but those are always the most contrasting colors. So a really light color or a really dark color are usually the most contrast. And if you could have a really light color and a dark color, 
both of them in your painting, that creates the most contrast. Um, like a white and a black, you know, the most contrasting color palette would be just white and black, really, because it's it's the extremes. So you have, you know, black, white, and to make it a little more interesting, you could add a couple middle value colors. Um, so, but I hope that helps, Linda. That's a that's a good question. So, all right. Let's see here. And um, okay, so let's see here. I think I'm going to just go ahead and, well, maybe I want to, I've got a lot of this over here. I think I might want to tilt a little bit of this off. A little bit, it's a little too much. So I'm gonna do a little tilting and then we'll do a little torsion. So again, I'm gonna kind of lift this straight up to do some extreme tilting. Okay, so let's take a look now. Yeah, I like that a lot better. So that looks pretty cool. And uh, let's see here. So now let's go ahead and I'm gonna grab my torch. We're gonna do a little torch in and see if we can create some, some really pretty cells. So here we go, I got my torch. This is just a, a really cheap torch from Amazon. It's about 15 bucks or so. I really like it though. It's got this trigger, so it's a whole lot easier to, to use. It's very, very simple. So you just pull the trigger. I like to kind of pull it with my thumb so I can hold it up, up, upright. And then I kind of start high like I'm, I'm up about a foot off of my canvas and then I come in low and then come back up high again. So here we go. Let's see what we can create. So I'm just kind of going in, just kissing the, and you can see where the uh, cells pop up. And I'm gonna flip the camera so you can see this. Um, so you can see that the, they're already starting. And I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here. So here, I, here's my torch. And this is about, the very tip of my torch is about six inches off of the, off of the surface. So, and I probably don't go any closer than that. That's about as close as I would get. And uh, so when I torch these, you probably won't see the tip of my torch. So I'm gonna torch right here and check this out. You'll see these things just kind of pop up. That's kind of, it might be difficult because it's a very light area. Um, let's see, I just wanna direct your eye, direct your eye right here and you'll see these uh, cells kind of pop up. There we go. See those, they just spring to life with just a small amount of heat. And it take a little bit of time to develop and grow. So I like to kind of heat an area, uh, let it develop a little bit, then go back in if you wanted to. So let's see here. And I like to have you know areas of rest. So I don't want cells covering the entire surface. I like these small areas in between, um, kind of restful areas. So I'm I'm kind of slowing down now and just kind of picking um, very specific areas. But yet I want the cells to kind of be tied together, kind of throughout the painting. I don't want like little like chunks of cells here and there. I want them to kind of be weaving in and out together, if that makes sense. Um, so me, I think I'm almost done though. Okay, so let's let that develop a little bit. I'm gonna take you to the uh, top view and hopefully that will uh, clear up in a second. 
And I'm going to just uh, let that um, let those cells grow a little bit, and I'll take a look and see if there are any questions. And Oval is saying uh, she likes that you can kind of sort of, sort of choose where to heat them. Yes, it's um, you have quite a bit of control over where you want the cells to pop up. Um, you can't really control what they look like or how much they pop up, but you do have control over kind of where you want them, which is kind of cool. I like it a lot. So let's see. And by the way, you don't have to do this with the cells. I mean, I really like that painting the way it was before we added any of these cells to it. But I wanted to show you, you know, the whole process. If you love cells, um, you know, this is a cool way of doing it. And I, I really love these types of cells uh, with the dimethicone and the uh, glue medium. And, um, and Diane is asking why so many of the cells are black. And these are probably the dark blue cells from our dark blue um, color that we had in here. And, but we have some kind of lighter cells. We have some of the coppery cells. Right over here, we've got a lot of the light blue cells. So there's a variety um, kind of of cells throughout. We've got a couple multicolored cells. It all depends on how the paints were, were laying on top of each other. And we really can't control that too much. But the way we can get interesting looking cells is by having lighter colors, darker colors, and kind of those in-between mid-value colors. And that's the real reason I wanted the copper in there. I wanted these kind of coppery uh, cells. So, and Sharon, I love it. I love it. She says, she does like the painting with the cells now. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, these are, these are, this is a very specific type of cell, um, but it's really fun to make them. So I'm glad I could change your mind a little bit. So, and I still love it. I would love this painting without the cells. The cells just add another dimension. It's all a personal choice, um, whether you want it or not. And Irma's asking, uh, what about dish soap, uh, water to make cells? And I've experimented with the dish soap. Um, it works okay. You can try it. Just a, like a, a drop or two, like how I added the, the dimethicone in the, the paints with the dish soap, and then you stir it in a little bit. Um, you, didn't, you definitely don't get the cells like this, though. These are very specific to the silicone or the dimethicone. Um, like the dish soap cells are a little bit different. Um, but it can work. I don't really use that all that often, but, um, but give it a try. You might really like it. And it's a whole lot easier to clean off your canvas too. So give it, give it a shot. And, uh, Judy is asking what, how, what is the canvas size? How much paint did I put through the funnel? Uh, this is a, a 12 by 16 canvas. Um, and I just poured on the base coat and kind of tilted it around. The funnel is right here. I don't want to drip it on the painting. It's this funnel. It's kind of a mid-size funnel. And I filled it up about halfway twice. So because I did two, two different funnel drags. So it's about maybe six ounces, five ounces of paint, maybe five. I'd say about five ounces of paint through the funnel. Um, but I just kind of eyeballed that. Um, so I wasn't very, I wasn't really super specific. So, and I'll put the colors, by the way, in the comments of the replay, if you want to try to do this on your own, um, I'll put the colors and the brands in the comment section of the, uh, of the replay. So, all right. And let's see here. And I'm going to, um, any other questions that I miss? I'm just checking for a question. Then we're just kind of hanging out here and just checking how these cells develop. Uh, they grow and expand um, and they kind of expand together. I really like this area right here. We've got very fine lacing within these cells right in here too. It's kind of cool. So, it's kind of a fun painting. I like this uh, technique a lot. Let's see here. I'm just checking for any uh, comments I missed. And 
again, let's see here. And then we'll get started with the uh, second demo. Let's see. Okay, well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad everyone likes the, uh, the demo and all the great comments. Thanks so much for all the, the nice comments. I appreciate that a lot. So, all right, so last step with, with this painting is you could take your smaller palette knife. Uh, where did it go? Here we are. You could take this and then just go scrape the bottom. I'll turn this slightly. Just scrape the bottom of your canvas off and you can get all this paint off. There's quite a bit that usually is stuck under there. And I do have tape on the bottom of my canvas. I like to put tape on there. It helps keep things clean. But then I just like to kind of scrape the bottom. Just like that, and we're done. So I'm gonna move this over to my rack and then uh, I will come back and we will do a second uh, demo. So just give me one second. All right, okay, I'm back. And let me grab our uh, second canvas. Again, it's a 12 by 16. I want to uh, wipe off my uh, knives really well because I have the dimethicone on them and I don't want to like cross contaminate my other paints. So I'll show you a trick for that. And then I see uh, uh, Kathy has a question. I gotta th I, let me just throw these paints out of the way. And here we go. I'm gonna just cover up my uh, my big cup again. I'll show you what I like to do. I like to take my tissue and just wipe that the brim of the cup off and then I take my the glad cling wrap stuff the press and seal and just just press it right back on there and then you keep these cups nice and airtight um, Works really good. So it's awesome Okay, so I got a couple questions. Let me uh Go back up here. I'm gonna flip back over. Hello again. So let me just uh, check out some of these questions. And uh, and Kathy is asking, are there any tricks to removing the tape without grabbing some of the paint too? Uh, the biggest trick I can give you is to really let the, the paint dry um, pretty thoroughly. It doesn't have to be 100% like cured, but you definitely want to let the paint dry on the top, like touch dry, dry to the touch. Uh, and then if you peel the paint off, try to peel it away from the edge, and then you'll be much less likely to pull the paint off from the side. Um, but uh, that's a good question. Um, and just be, just go kind of slowly, kind of go carefully. Um, and you should, you should uh, be in good shape. Let's see here. And Nabal is asking, uh, what was the background color on the first painting? Uh, and I'll put all the colors in the in the uh, description of the replay. But it was really quickly berry, which is um, a deco art metallics color, and then and then black. So it's like a really dark maroon color. 
And uh, let's see. And Diane is saying, uh, would it help to highlight the, the questions? It always helps, Diane. Yeah. <laughs> the question marks, that, that would be awesome. Um, they go by so quickly. So I have to kind of scroll back up to look for them. Um, but yeah, anything you can want to throw in there to, to, um, to help is great. Um, and then uh, Susan is asking, I found a medium and small size funnel. Any hits, hints on technique? And if you were going to use combs or um, schmears, uh, when is the best time? Well, that's a great question and great timing, uh, Susan, because we're going to cover that right now. Um, I'm going to probably use for our second painting, probably this small funnel with the small hole and maybe the medium funnel, uh, and maybe do an another two funnel pours. Um, I like the small one for you know a little more detailed uh, areas, and then a little larger hole, you can get a little larger kind of ribbons of color flowing through there. And then I'll also show you uh, if you wanted to manipulate your paint with the combs or like finger drags, things like that, uh, we'll take a look at that too. That's what we're, what's coming up right now. So great timing, great question. Um, and I didn't pay Susan for that. So, all right. Let's see here. Uh, and by the way, the, the size is, uh, you don't have to, you, you know, fill up the entire funnel too of paint. You could just fill it up part way. Uh, I'm more focused on the, the tips, the, like the opening size rather than the, uh, you know, a big, the uh, quantity of paint I can fit in there. Uh, Cause you usually never put the entire, you know, fill it all the way to the brim usually. So, all right. Hey, Gail's joined us. Awesome. Hey, Gail. Thanks for stopping by. We're doing more funnel pours today. So, love when Gail stops by. Gail is awesome. She's a fantastic uh, painter and photographer. Go check out her uh, channel and her uh, Facebook page. So, okay, here. All right, no question, no more questions anyway. Um, so let's dive into the second uh, color palette. It's going to be a, oop, I got to do this first. Sorry. I got to wipe off my uh, painting knives. So what I like to do, I'm going to flip the camera and um, come on, mouse, work. So here we go. Here is our canvas. And I've got some paint on my big knife and I've got some on my small knife. I like to use these little tiny alcohol wipes. Um, you get these at um, any kind of uh, pharmacy or usually the drugstore maybe has, drugstore will have them, grocery store. Um, but it's like a little tiny alcohol wipe. You probably can't even see what I'm doing. So a little wipe like this. And so I'm just gonna wipe off my knife. And the only reason is because I had uh, the, the dimethicone paint on it. And I don't wanna like spread this into my Floetrol based paints. So that's pretty good. And then I'll do the same thing with my big one. And, uh, and by the way, alcohol um, wipes take acry dry acrylic paint off really, really well. So if your tools are ever covered in dried um, acrylics, the alcohol will take it off pretty fast. And I got quite a bit on this one. There we go. So just, it doesn't have to be, you know, pristine. I just want to kind of get that, uh, the diamethicone stuff off. We're good to go. All right. So that's another little handy tip. The alcohol wipes are great. So let's take a look. Here's our canvas. And uh, I'm using some of the colors we used yesterday because uh, I had a bunch of them left. So I thought I might as well use them. So we're going to have a slightly different color scheme, but a few of the colors are the same. So here is our metallic white. Uh, this is the metallic white I mixed up. This is that uh, champagne or kind of pewter color, which is just gold and silver mixed together to get this beautiful color. Uh, and then I've got a really dark, um, I got a bunch of it. This is a Payne's gray. This will be part of our base coat. We're gonna do a split base coat. So have a, a light 
side and a dark side to our base coat. And I've got uh, a bunch of white right here. And this is white and it's, it's a slightly off white. So what I did with this is uh, it's mostly white, but I put a little bit of silver and a little bit of gold in there. So it's a little bit like this color. You know, this is a little bit darker than this one, but this is like a, like an ivory looking white. So it's not like pure white. I wanted a little color in my white. And then we've got a, uh, this is the metallic cobalt teal from yesterday. And then I mixed up a brand new uh, metallic blue. And this is one of my favorite colors. This is uh, Artist Loft uh, metallic blue. It's this gorgeous blue color. And it's, of course, it's metallic. I just love it. I use it all the time. It's just a, a wonderful color. So we have like a turquoise and a blue. So this analogous color palette is green blues and blues. So that's what we're working with. And of course, you can always use white or black in any of your color schemes. Um, we're cheating a little bit with this kind of neutralized silver color, um, but it's pretty close. So this is more of a green, blue, and blue color palette. Uh, so we got a dark blue, kind of a right in the middle blue, more of a primary blue, and then this uh, blue-green right there. So um, that's what we're going to be working with. And then we're going to be doing a split base coat. So and that should add a lot of contrast to our uh, to our painting. So first of all, what I'm gonna do is move these so I don't dump them over. I'm gonna grab my white and I have to decide what area of the canvas I want to be white and what I want to be the blue. And the other thing I need to decide is which one do I want to be uh, dominant and which one do I want to be like the subordinate or the accent color. I don't want a 50-50 like white and then blue like a line right down the middle. Um, you always want to, you know, emphasize one over the other. So the white is going to be the dominant color. And I think what I'm going to do is just pour some on here. And I think I'm going to tilt this off. And then I'll put the blue on and tilt the blue around. So again, before we the last one, we just spread it around with a knife. This one, I'll, I'll just use my fingers a little um, to move the paint around. And I might use my knife anyway. I just want to get this done kind of quickly because you can't see the white. So let's get on to the good stuff. So I'm just moving it towards the edge, and then I'm going to tilt off of the edge. So my white seems a tiny bit thick, so that could be a, not a problem really, but I just noticed that. I think it'll be okay. Okay, so we did that corner, we did this corner. Just moving the paint back. I want to add a little more because if I put the blue right on this line, we're very 50-50. And I know you can't see anything that I'm doing. So I'm going to try to make, you know, speed this up. All right, so I might pour a little bit of this paint right back in my cup. Okay. All right, so thanks for bearing with me for the, the boring white part. 
and uh, let's see here. I'm gonna. So we're done with that. I might pop pop a few air bubbles after we get going. And so now let's do the blue. Um, I'm gonna take the blue, and I want the blue to just be kind of in this smaller uh, section right down here. So let's just pour this on. And I'll tilt the blue around a little bit, kind of tilt it into the white. And it'll kind of create some interesting, fun, you know, shapes, interesting lines. And I like that because um, they're usually more interesting than I could come up with. So I like to kind of work off of that. So here we go. I'm just covering the. Uh, edges there, and I'm going to just tilt back a little. Just evening out the, uh, the paint a little bit, and then we're ready to go. So I've got uh, a very cool little line here, and I'm going to kind of follow this line with my funnel. And then I might also do a little funnel up in the negative space a little more. And then we'll tilt it around. We'll do some manipulation and just see what we can make of this painting. So here we go. Let's get uh, our first funnel. And I'm going to use the medium one first. So this is kind of the medium sized hole here. And then I'll show you this hole. Maybe you can see it through the... Uh, this is the small one. I'm going to use the medium one. And then the small one, maybe do a little detail, something up in here. So I'm going to start and just put this on the, uh, make sure you can see what I'm going to do. And then just start and put it right on the, on the stretcher bar, right down in the corner, and just start filling it up with paints. And I'm going to use my uh, kind of silvery color first. And then I want to make sure I use, since the blue and the green are very close in value. They're very close in value, these two colors. I want to use a light color in between them, and that'll create some more blending and uh, separation between the green and the blue. So I definitely want to do that. Oops, I got a little drip again. And we could do some high pour if we wanted to, which I think is a good idea. I'm going to use the white and do a little high pour. So the paint shoots all the way down in the funnel. That's creating a lot of mixing and blending. And what's next here? There's a little blue, a little more of our white. And I think that's pretty much uh, all I'm gonna do for this funnel. That's quite a bit of paint. Oh, I'm gonna need, I need one more little thing of green. There we go. There we go. So now we're ready to go. I'm going to just start dragging this kind of on our line here. Uh, and I might deviate a little bit, but we'll, we'll see what happens. So let's see if I can flip the uh, camera so you can see a little bit better shot of the puddle. Oops. Okay. Let's go. And uh, just very slowly and gently, I'm just lifting my funnel up. Kind of following this line a little with it. It's a lot of paint coming out. So if, a lot, if too much starts coming out, just put your funnel back down on the canvas and it'll stop it. And there we go. I've got more paint in here. So I'm going to go... Um, one thing I'm going to do, I'm going to move it over to the edge and then just stick my finger under it. So I'm holding the rest of the paint inside the funnel. And I'm going to start again. And Donna mentioned this yesterday. What happens if you do a funnel in a funnel? Well, this is kind of like a funnel in a funnel. And I'm going to just kind of put this right back down on top of our previous puddle and kind of run it through there. So this is sort of like a funnel in a funnel.
And that is it. So we're done with that one. And let's see. Now I think... Just taking a look, I'm going to go back to the top view. Now that's a quite a bit of paint. We have quite a, a lot of paint in this big long ribbon. I'm not sure if I want to add more because once I start tilting, this is going to take up a lot of area. So I think I'm going to um, not do that second one like I planned, but I'm going to tilt a little bit. Then we'll do a little manipulation. Um, with our maybe a finger drag. And you could do that now, actually. Let's try one now. Let's try a couple now before we do a bunch of tilting. So I'm going to just take my finger. And of course, this is optional. You don't have to do this. And I'm going to just run it kind of through here once or twice. And then the paint will kind of uh, come back together. Just a couple little interesting squiggles. And I want to do a couple in the uh, light area. And these are fun to do, and they don't look great. But once we start tilting, they're going to change and look much cooler. Now let's do one over here. That one's going to be very subtle, but I like that. I'm going to do one kind of in the middle here. So I think that's that's good. Now I'm going to do my I'm going to get my combs and I'll do a little bit of comb work, but I'm going to tilt this first a little bit just to kind of move those, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna lose a little of that blue off the bottom edge. But now I'm gonna kind of aggressively kind of move this around. And see what happens. So we had a lot of paint on there. I'm glad I didn't add any more. Um, I'm going to tilt off this corner to make that more of a blue corner. Okay, so there we go. That's a that's a good start. And I quite like what the split base can do to you, or can do for your painting, not to you, um, but for your painting. It gives it a whole new dimension because we have this really nice dark area down here in this really light upper area. Um, it's a very cool effect. So I really love this one. That turned out nice. The other ones we lost, these ones are okay. I might manipulate these a little more. Um, and we might have to decide about this. I'm not quite sure yet. But um, let me get the combs out. Now, the combs, you could have, I wish I had used a little less paint uh, in that funnel uh, and had a little more negative space. Um, the combs we can use, uh, and I'll, um, you could have used them before when you did the finger drags. Um, I'm debating whether or not to use them now because I really quite like what's happening. But let me show you what they are and you can uh, think about them. And uh, let me grab them. <clears throat> so these are the combs in question. And uh, these are, I've, I've shown these before. They're really fun. This is a set. Uh, Pazalon men's combs. Um, they have all different types of shapes. 
and different like uh, like the, the little prongs are different sizes and they have big ones, the little ones. This is kind of a cool one to play around with. Um, I like this one a lot. I use this one all the time, the three prongs and then three different uh, sides you can paint with. Um, they're very fun. And you could get these on my Amazon storefront too. They're listed there if you want to check them out. Uh, they're not very expensive. Now I want to, I might want to do some comb things in here, but they're going to be kind of subtle. Um, and um, JC is 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 is, is um, not happy <laughs> that I pulled the combs out, <laughs> so she doesn't like to see them. Um, but I might want to just try a little bit of something in here, and these will be subtle marks. Um, you could make you could make uh, very distinctive marks if you pulled like the comb through the dark base coat into your paint um, or from your paint into the light color, those will make very distinctive marks. What I'm gonna do is something a little more subtle. I'm gonna use the three prong here and just move the comb slightly through here. So you probably won't be able to see these. And, uh, but I just want to add a couple little interesting, these are going to be very subtle. And they'll still change a little bit um, after we tilt a little more. So, But I don't want to do a lot. I mean, you know, there's, you can take this to, uh, you can get really wild with this and you can make some really cool, fun effects. Uh, I think with the combs and any kind of uh, manipulation, less is more. You want to have, you know, not just one mark, but if you ever make a mark, make it somewhere else. So we have at least two, because then it looks like you did it on purpose instead of an accident. Um, so I made a couple little, very, slight little marks in there, but you, you, you probably would never even notice unless I pointed them out. But I love the feel and the organic nature of this uh, painting, so I don't think I want to mess with it too much. Plus, it just doesn't lend itself to the combs because there's not too much negative space. So um, I don't think we'd have any kind of advantage by using the combs too much more. So I think I'm going to just do a slight bit of tilting. I want to change the shape of this a little. I might pour this one off. It's kind of close to the edge and uh, I don't really love the way it looks. So I'm just gonna tilt a little bit and see what happens. Okay. So I'm just gonna Yeah, this is these are all just very subtle, small little changes. Okay, I think that's it. So I had a little bit of that turquoise right up here. I tilted that off. So now we have this beautiful blue corner that kind of just leads the eye right down into the this that stream of blue. I kind of tilted that little thing off the edge. I just touched the painting. Wow, that was dumb. But um, I like this shape a little bit more. Um, this right here, this line is a little too I really like that interesting line. I wish it was 
up into the painting a little bit more, but I can't move that up without messing this all up. And I really love this. So that's just going to, I'm just going to leave it alone. Sometimes you have to have compromises uh, in your paintings. So that's one of them. Um, but all in all, I think it's a very cool, fun painting. So very simple color palette, split base coat. And uh, we did Donna's uh, funnel in a funnel, which I thought is very cool. And oh, Don Donna has got the eagle eye. And I was just about to point that out. Um, this little blue dot right here, she said, you, you should tilt that off and I'm going to. That tiny little dot, it's just very, uh, it's, it's just a little too, um, pull, you know, drawing too much attention to itself. So if I can do that. I'll do it. It's going to make me work for it, though. But that's okay. Here we go. So sometimes those things are worth doing, sometimes not. Um, I think that was worth it. Okay. So there we go. We got rid of the little tiny blue dot. We made a little different looking dot, but that one's kind of in the blue. That's not as bad. So there we go. That is our second demo. And we got a lot of cool cells and some cool lacing happening in there. Um, I really like we had that very light passage of the first funnel, and then we went with the dark blue through there. Very cool effect that we uh, were able to create. So, okay. So I quite like that one. That's a fun funnel pour. That's kind of an elegant painting. So let me go back here and... Uh, see if there are any other questions before we uh, break today. Okay. So well, thanks so much for all the, the great comments. I'm happy everyone likes it. JC is not cursing me out, so that's good. Happy about that. Um, cool. Let's see here. So any questions that you might have, uh, last minute questions, um, uh, throw them in the comments. And uh, Naval is asking, um, can you do a quick demo with a couple contrasting colors to show more extreme uh, results or, or how more extremes can work? Um, not today, but I will do, I'll be doing demos on Friday, two different ones. I'll, I can do more of an extreme contrast demo then we're going to be doing an open cut pour um, so that is a great one to do with a lot of a lot of high contrast open cups lend themselves very well to a lot of high contrast um, the one right behind me is pretty high contrast via black in the turquoise that's got a lot of high contrast in it but i'll do some more for you let's see here And uh, Jay is asking, great question, Jay. When is the last day the membership enrollment is open? Uh, the, the doors to the membership close on Saturday, uh, midnight Eastern time. So you've got all day Saturday, all evening Saturday, um, 9 p.m. Pacific time, midnight Eastern time is when the doors close. So um, great question, Jay. And uh, <laughs> Donna says they were screaming at me. Yeah, they usually are. Um, I've got a very active, vibrant membership, and uh, they let me know what they are thinking, which is great. Oh, my gosh. And, uh, yeah, no one liked the combs. 
So, and I agree for this particular painting. Yeah, the combs, the combs, we didn't need them. Um, cool. All right. So I'm just checking to see if there are any, uh, uh, any questions. And uh, <laughs> Donna is um, is a, a, a wary of my aggressive side, so I only take it out on my paintings, Donna. So, <laughs> oh my gosh, that's funny. Okay, let's see. Any new questions? And um, and Donna's like, I heard you mentally. I could hear the voices in my head, um, telepathy. And uh, oh my gosh. And then Don has got all kinds of crazy ideas here. Like how weird it would be if you took a small cup of blue and ran it across that top edge and swiped the blue. Well, you'd, you'd swipe the whole painting and you just get a swipe painting. Um, so it would be crazy though. That's pretty much a last resort to like a painting you really, really don't like is to like swipe it. And uh, basically swiping it is another way of saying scraping it, in my opinion. Only you might end up with something a little more pretty after you swipe. Okay. All right, so, well, thanks for all the great comments, everybody. I don't see any new questions showing up, um, but I'm gonna throw in the link to go check out the Pouring Studio membership uh, one more time. And uh, please go over there and check it out. And uh, I'd love to see you inside. I'd love to have you join us. We do this every month. It's really fun. We meet every week. We do demos. We uh, talk about paint pouring. We uh, meet inside our Facebook group. We share our paintings. I give out prizes in the art show. It's a whole lot of fun that we have every single month. Plus, if you join right now, there are a ton of incredible bonuses, which will never be um, offered again. So I urge you to take advantage if you're at all interested in uh, like kind of taking the next step in your paint pouring or you want to get serious with it or you just want to have a whole bunch of fun painting in a, a group of awesome people, um, the membership is a great opportunity. So uh, I will uh, tell you that and uh, put that, I think I put the link in there, all right. So tomorrow we're going to uh, not do any painting demos but I'm gonna share some, some great info on uh, things you'll be able to apply to your other acrylic paint pours in the future. Um, and uh, I will talk to you again tomorrow. Take care, everyone. I'll see you uh, very soon. Bye-bye.